Welcome back. This is John again, and this time I'm going to be showing a new home, and I think it's uh, like a Model 900. Uh, we'll look on the back to see, but uh, I think they call it a XL2 also. But uh, it's a new home. It's a, I believe it's made in Japan. It's missing the top cover here. There's a top cover that goes on to cover all this stuff up, but uh, it was missing when I got it. Uh, this is a free cycle unit, so it just cost me the gas to pick it up. It's a free arm. This tray comes off. If you want to do free arm sewing. Here's a swatch with a few of the stitches, stitch patterns that it can do. And this is, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's got a big cam stack in the back. We can't see it, but uh, there's a big cam stack. And uh, so some of these, you can see that it goes forwards and backwards depending on what you choose. So some of them are uh, quite decorative. And it's got the standard zigzag straight stitched kind of stuff. So let's just go around here. Uh, this is the stitch length and this is the reverse button. This is a zigzag width and it's spring loaded and to get it to stay someplace you, you put it in a position and then you have to push it in and then let it come back out again and then it'll stay there. You can override it pushing it back to zero if you want or push the button in and it snaps back to zero. But it's a little awkward to use but once you know how to use it it's not bad. So stitch length, zigzag width, the outside collar here has left, midi middle and right needle positions and then it's got a setting for straight stitch <coughs> which is kind of interesting um, let me see I'll move the camera down here when we set up for straight stitch it's got a tiny little thing that slides in and makes a single hole instead of the zigzag width. So let me move it away from there. I don't know if you saw that slide out. See it open and close depending on whether we want straight stitch or zigzag. It's a funny little door. So let's get back to these dials. So that's left, media, middle, and right, and it's got a setting for twin needle if you want to do that. This knob adjusts all the for the stitch patterns. And the first time you turn it, 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 it undoes a mechanism inside, so then uh, none of the levers get bound up and so then the next time you turn it it starts moving the little indicator so you can select whichever oh, well, it's a little stiff come on there we go and then once you select your stitch pattern you want you either just push on the foot control and it locks it into place or you can push the button and it locks it into place. So then the first time you start turning it again it un undoes the mechanism inside and then you can start moving it to a different setting and then you, you click it like that to lock it in or just start the machine and it'll do that click on its own. So, 
this little button on top opens up and shows all the different stitch patterns you can do and it gives you the numbers like 0 through 4 is a buttonhole so 0 through 4 here is a button oops 0 through 4 is a buttonhole so all these numbers correspond to these numbers up here and it's got you push the button again and it opens up this neat little compartment that's got all the extra feet in it and I didn't realize that was there until I was watching a video online of somebody else that has one of these machines. So you push it once and it opens the first door, push it again and it opens the second door. And all the feet are there. I was surprised. This, this is a kind of an interesting one here. This is uh, for chain stitch. So you put this piece in place of the bobbin down below and you flip out a little lever here and then you thread the thread, the upper thread, pretty much the same as a normal uh, when you're going to sew normally. But it does a chain stitch so it only uses the upper thread and this in place of the lower bobbin. That's kind of interesting. So then we move around to the side, and that's the power switch over here. Let's get a little light on it, and it's got high, low, and the bottom is a blind stitch. What that does is it, it does a single stitch and then stops the needle at the top when you push the control pedal. And then you can move your fabric along push the pedal again and it does one stitch up and down and up and stops it again. And so that just does uh, blind stitch as long as you want it. Didn't come with a foot control so I've just adapted one of the old ones that I have with a couple of plugs to just plug into the top and the bottom terminals there to get it to work. And I don't think there's anything exciting on the back side. And you can see here it says model 900. I don't know if you can read that. Alright, let's thread the machine. It's uh, made at a time when they want you to, when it's they're trying to make it more simple to thread these things so you don't have to fish things through tension discs and everything. You just run it back behind this gray thing there, down through the slot, up around, take up lever, back down, through a couple little gizmos down here. Okay. And I'm going to do just a decorative stitch on here on my practice cloth. Let's see, we need zigzag. I'll set it at zero to five roughly. I'll just put it two and a half. And here we go. Well it would help to plug in the little guy on the side, wouldn't it? Now oh, let's try it. You can see it going back and forth. I chose one that I think it's doing this pattern now. Yeah. I don't know, it's kind of long, so we'll short up to one. So it works very well. That was high speed. We'll do low speed.
so low speed you can slow it down quite a ways. Now, what else should we do? We'll do some little leads. Oh, let me show you the blind stitch setting too. It's kind of interesting. Let's see, flip the switch down to the bottom on the side. No zigzag. And I don't know about stitch length. I don't think it matters. It does one when I push the pedal down, and then I can move the fabric along. And it does one. Move it along again. Does that again. Oops. So it does just a long. I'm pulling all the thread out right now, but it does just a stitch for you to. Just a temporary kind of thing. <coughs> that you can just pull out later on. So here we have the decorative patterns that I just did a couple of them. Maybe it shows up better on the back side. Back in the day this was probably a pretty expensive machine with all the different stitch patterns it's got. I had this thing all apart because it was kind of binding up inside. Grease was old. And so I had it apart as much as I could. And it's got a cam stack in the back that's probably five inches long with all these different cams that the levers would go up against. And I got it put back together and the feed dogs didn't work. So I had to take the whole thing apart again. And that was probably an eight hour evolution just to get the feed dogs going again. But they're working. And this uh, down here is where we load the bobbin. It's got a standard class 15 bobbin case, it looks like. The case is all metal. Don't know what it's made out of, but it's all metal. There you have it, a new home, model 900. I think it's also called an XL2, XL Roman numeral 2. Very nice machine. I imagine it was made sometime in the mid-70s. Thank you for watching.